viewers uh, welcome to yet another chat show this is our 51st chat show in the connect uh, tv series uh, very very happy in fact thank you uh, all of you thanks a lot for all your support uh, and uh, continuous uh, feedback that you have been giving us and today we have a very interesting uh, topic as always uh, it's called the, the renal project the renal as you can make out uh, they got something to do with the the kitties uh, etc so we have a uh, shashank who was the, doing this project the renal project let's uh, straight away start understanding from shashank uh, shashank welcome to the show uh, let's understand uh, give us a, a walk through about your, your, on your project the renal project sure sure thanks uh, uh, kumar sahab giving this platform so that we can explain mm-hmm. ourselves and we are really honored to be over here and uh, present ourselves as uh, we deal with uh, one of the growing crises in india and uh, thank you very much so uh, to begin with i have a masters degree in biomedical engineering uh, from university of texas in us okay. and post that i worked for corporations like ge healthcare philips and uh, my career in uh, medical devices spanning more than uh, 10 to 12 years in my last job Uh, between 2013 and 2018 i was uh, based in delhi and i was and i was handling the asia pacific region for kidney care products for a very good company called baxter so baxter make baxter makes all kidney care products and i was handling the quality assurance in uh, 11 countries in asia pacific now on the job i had lot of travels Uh, to various countries and this is where i got face to face connected with uh, the kidney care scenario in each of these countries and also in india so uh, even small countries uh, like hong kong had uh, more outreach of the kidney uh, uh, therapy uh, like dialysis and kidney care uh, better than india just to give an example uh, the one of the modalities peritoneal dialysis we had more than 2000 machines in hong kong uh, with the customers whereas in india we had a total of only 600 peritoneal dialysis for such a vast country mm-hmm. so lot of such uh, things uh, triggered uh, a thought that you know where is india lacking and uh, is it that we do not have kidney problem or we do have a kidney problem but uh, there is lack of awareness or there is everything there is awareness there is kidney problem but we are just not addressing it and uh, so i uh, collaborated with a lot of nephrologists my teams and just to understand the landscape of kidney care in india and lot of shocking uh, numbers facts and figures came to my uh, attention and came to my knowledge a um, lot of uh, a huge percentage estimated around 11 to 15 lakh uh, kidney patients are there in india Okay. and uh, out of which, uh, which uh, probably half of them are able to get dialysis uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, there are a lot of data that says that only 25 to 30% get kidney care and these are the identified patients the, okay. the ones which are not identified there is really no systematic study that is done in india so it's a huge problem a huge crisis that is growing day by day because uh because of diabetes and hypertension lot of kidney failures are coming day by day and uh, the we will never know about it correct i think india by by and large i think uh, culturally we have this issue of uh, not attending to the medical issues unless it comes to your neck correct whether it is uh, correct. Corona, whether it is any of the diseases you know and right. uh, though we have been independent for the past uh, say 70 70 plus years now um we are still lagging in terms of uh, though of course there are a uh, uh, lot of uh, progress uh, has been there is a lot of lot of progress that has been made but uh, right. i think uh, the, the problems like kidney still remain largely unattended correct correct and uh, also uh, one uh, uh, one uh, fact is that you know uh, for example bollywood um if that's very popular that and we've seen across 70s and 2000s that you know the the hero or hero's mom has cancer yeah or uh, you know blood cancer or yes. brain tumor so these are the very much in the forefront and people know about it 
but kidney care is something that has it's not have been in popular uh, you know out there and uh, that's the reason it has been uh, not addressed adequately uh, also the healthcare budget of uh, the government uh, as we have discussed uh, and we've been discussing for decades yeah. also needs a revision there is a huge yeah. margin of improvement over there and because of which something like dialysis now dialysis is a lifeline for kidney uh, patients yes uh, the blood does not get purified uh, the the urea and the creatinine in the fluid accumulates in the body and instead of 7 liters of uh, blood which the heart is made to pump now yeah. the, uh, the entire system is pumping 9 to 10 liters of fluid so uh, immediately it is a death sentence yes. and it is a procedure called dialysis which actually filters and takes out the fluid and the urea and the toxins and the creatinine out of the body and essentially gives the kidney patient few more days of life but is and it a lifelong is, uh, is it lifelong treatment dialysis one has yeah. to be on it lifelong right right so once uh, once it is a chronic kidney disease it is called ckd and it has got one to five stages so once it's uh, you are uh, 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 the patient is in a ckd chronic kidney disease it is uh, pretty much that uh, there will be uh, uh, there will be a therapy that is required lifelong okay um, because the kidneys are not functioning and uh, it is called a renal replacement therapy so yeah. it uh, the kidneys the function of the kidneys since the kidneys are not functioning has to be done externally with a yeah. procedure called dialysis the only other option is a kidney transplant which happens only in 3 to 5% of the total cases even in developed countries mm -hmm. and it is uh, it also has complications and also it is unaffordable to the mm -hmm. masses yes so dialysis literally is the lifeline for kidney patients and for 15 lakh to 18 lakh patients out there in india Uh, dialysis is a huge huge requirement and a repetitive requirement every two days every three days every three days uh, the patient has to go take a four hour dialysis therapy so that he can survive some more after three days again he has to come which takes a toll on his uh, socio economic uh, structure he yeah. cannot do a job some uh, most of the times uh, also he has to be accompanied by someone else yes. uh, in the family and that's lots of lot of stress the travel the time and also the employment gets affected so it's a double whammy and, and what are the, is, what, uh, what are as going by your experience what could have been the major reasons one is of course the diabetes and uh, statistics show that diabetes is on the rise because of the lifestyle right. and uh, the kind of uh, right. you know, food people right. eat etc so correct, uh, correct. other than diabe uh, diabetes what could be the other reasons you know which are responsible for right, right. kidney issues right so diabetes so even in developing countries and uh, 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 some of the developed countries across uh, 30% to 60% of the cases are through because of diabetes and high blood pressure and it is not just diabetes and high blood pressure but also the medication towards it uh, okay. which uh, puts a pressure on uh, the kidneys so that is one reason the other is autoimmune which is yet being studied uh, third is uh, hereditary uh, there's a lot of research is being done uh, and certain family structures and you know certain families are uh, are seen they are prone to having kidney failures if someone's uh, uncle or grandmother had suffered they are at a higher risk so mm -hmm. hereditary is one uh, action the, uh, the other one is also the food and the water habits mm -hmm. sometimes the water quality and the well water and the brackish water also does lot of uh, damage to the system including mm -hmm. the kidney and certain coastal region with high salinity have shown that yeah there is a, a significant correlation uh, in chances of kidney failure in such regions lot of people are having uh, have the issue of kidney stones of course some of it is being today treated by laser uh, therapy but uh, does kidney stone issue also lead to uh, these kind of uh, kidney issue problems so uh, so the kidney stone actually is a urological issue which is different from this nephrology uh, kidney stone is uh, it can be surgically removed it, there are also uh, medically it can be removed but this is a uh, kidney failure uh, what what dialysis is really treating is that the function of you know um, the function of the kidney uh, you know that nephron uh, yeah. which does the filtration of the process that is yeah. not being done 
So it's an it's an organic or organic uh, like organ failure. So yeah, coming back to our uh, your uh, uh, your project. So uh, right. how, how it so, all started? How it all started? Correct. So when I saw that there is a rampant uh, growth and every year almost two and a half lakh people die because of not being able to get adequate dialysis is uh, when I met with nephrologists and uh, a lot of experts. I myself traveled to the interiors of Maharashtra and the outskirts of Mumbai and I got to know that the current scenario is that uh, uh, most of the dialysis centers are 15 to 20 bed dialysis centers and they are located within tier one cities. Okay. And because there was a very, very peculiar uh, condition that uh, the, the people from the outskirts of tier one cities and the tier two cities were having to travel sometimes 150 kilometers, 200 kilometers every three days to get their dialysis coming to the city. This is the scenario which did not even make uh, a social sense, medical sense or even business sense. Yes. So it is an untapped uh, 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 territory that there are patients on the outskirts and the peripheries and the neighborhoods of tier one, two and three cities who do not get proximate access to kidney care dialysis every two days, three days, and they are having to travel such a long distance. So and 68% uh, of India's population is non urban. Yeah. So dialysis missing out on these peripheries and in the tier two and three cities is a huge opportunity. To make a difference, but, right? But, are, are, but aren't there any mobile units which can cater to this kind of requirement? See, so mobile units are not economical. Mobile units, imagine having a, a van, a driver, a physician, a dialysis technician, a machine and a water, you know, a water tank. Each dialysis takes around 150 liters of pure water. Okay. Uh, the petrol, uh, the biomedical waste management, there are so many parameters that go into it and the van goes and travels to somewhere and maybe does two or three or four dialysis in a day. Correct. That is not the volume it can and, cater. And the hygiene so, issues, hygiene issues also. Yeah. Uh, right. And hygiene issues and also economy. It, it's just very uh, difficult uh, uh, to make the ends meet. So it's a very costly and a van can only serve so many dialysis patients. Okay. As against if you actually open a dialysis center over there with even two or three bed, then you are serving at least nine to ten dialysis sessions in a day, which means that you are able to serve 30, 35 patients who otherwise would be traveling 100 kilometers far to get their dialysis. So, so when you see that, this uh, almost all almost all the uh, small places around the main city peripheries, uh, they will be having they have, must be having this center for issues. I mean, let's take Mumbai, of course, is very large and Mumbai, right. out of Mumbai, outside Mumbai right. is also totally urbanized. So take less like a surplus like Satara or say a Surat or a Baroda. Yeah, Correct. In those Correct. kind of places in the peripheries, uh, you, you do me to say there will be a lot of patients like this will be requiring. Say, Absolutely. Absolutely. Even even within Mumbai, within Mumbai, there are uh, there are these stations and suburbs and between the suburbs, if you uh, uh, if you go, uh, there are uh, the patients have to travel even in, uh, you know because uh, Bombay the travel time is more it's all uh, correct, distances correct. maybe might be four kilometers but it takes 45 minutes to go True. so if you have a dialysis uh, uh, center 45 minutes away that doesn't work you need a dialysis center which is very close to home it is like just a neighborhood like a uh, like a Kirana that is the ideal state and oh. then people will be served better that is because the dialysis that is the requirement. requirement. Right, exactly. Because the dialysis patients have a little fistula uh, on their hand. They are weak. They are stressed. They are depressed. And you can't tell them to uh, go uh, 10 kilometers. Let's say 10, just 10 kilometers. Forget about 100 kilometers, which is really the scenario in India today. But even 10 kilometers, how can you expect this person who most probably is above 65 to travel 10 kilometers every two days, every two days just for dialysis and to survive? People give up on the treatment, people get infection and there are so many mortalities just because of proximation, you know, the proximate availability of dialysis. So the number one thing I found out yeah. in my research, leaving the corp, you know, from my corporate job that I was uh, doing was that uh, proximity of the dialysis center availability is very, very essential to get quality care and to make sure that th there is a sustained uh, treatment that the patient avails.
the 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 white space that it, there was right uh, so much high population untreated and unreached and untapped i um, i gave up on my job and i thought this is really something worth doing so i started with one dialysis uh, center uh, in the northern suburb of mumbai and uh, it it kicked off very well it was an instant success Where because uh, we was, collaborate with horribly a uh, lot of 90% of the healthcare happens in those neighborhood 35 40 50 bed neighborhood hospitals and nursing homes yes. that's where people are like okay i know the doctor over there they go and get it get admitted yes. we collaborate with these 35 50 in, uh, bed yes. hospitals who are in the outskirts and the peripheries and even the suburbs and uh, they are very happy they uh, the hospital knows that uh, you know there is a revenue sharing Uh, they have a space of 200 square feet, and we do not. Our model is not that we uh, we want to open a 15 to 20 bed big dialysis center. Even if there is a space for two beds, we will install those two beds, start t- uh, treating the patients, and all the patient population around will now not have to go 100 kilometers, and they get a treatment pro- approximate in their neighborhood hospital. So today, uh, so we uh, starting with one center. in one and a half years we have 21 centers in mumbai pune thane nasik region and the hospitals are very very willing to collaborate and uh, we do not have a business development or a sales team either it's just organic uh, people by word of mouth they feel that okay we can also open a dialysis uh, offering at our hospital so today the renal project is a dialysis management expert you can just you we are just one phone call away and now because of us even a orth- orthopedic doctor who's a mm-hmm. bone doctor right yeah, an yeah. orthopedic doctor with his 35 bed nursing home is now enabled to have dialysis as one of the offering and he can serve the kidney uh, growing kidney care population around him typically, we uh, typically what is the area that you require to set up even a two three bed uh, dialysis care center and what are the investments correct so a two uh, to three bed dial uh, unit uh, of dialysis takes around 200 square feet of place and uh, if we lease the the equipment it takes uh, around 5 to 7 lakhs of investment uh, you give me 5 to 7 lakhs of uh, uh, cash and i can open one dialysis center and how fast can you, as a business business proposition how fast can you recover that right. roi today everybody looks at roi you see correct correct so uh, it takes around 3 to 4 months to go full capacity uh, and after the after the this full capacity it takes around 6 to 8 months to uh, to break uh, even all the capital expenditure so totally within 9 to 12 months yeah, about a year about a year about a year you get the money recovered and, and uh, then you, uh, it is just... typically is it uh, always attached to your hospital supposing i have a I'm, I have suppose my have my newspaper office. I have a spare capacity. Right. I can I can uh, you know use a two fifty three hundred square feet of Correct. area. Can that be right. used? Uh, or they they have some yes. medical. right so that can be set up it, it will be called as a stand alone dialysis center of yeah. course it needs uh, 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 some approvals and uh, uh, biomedical uh, waste management system environmental controls fire hazard uh, and also it needs uh, by the guidelines uh, an icu facility that is uh, proximate to this place if the icu facility is 100 kilometers away then uh, probably it is it is not uh, uh, it is not wise to have a dialysis facility so uh, it can be opened yes and uh, there are a little bit more expenses related to water electricity rent and a medical professional on board which we get it by default in a hospital so if we don't have with a hospital but we go for a stand alone there are more overheads there are more fixed cost attached but yes if in that place in that locality or district or taluka we have to open one Uh, which is a stand alone then be it we will open a stand alone center have you done any if if the- there is uh, uh, yes we have yes we have one in pune and one in dhaisar they are stand alone centers and there is a doctor attending to the patients correct they, yes they may be going yes, by, by appointment and things like that 
right right absolutely and there is one we opened uh, uh last uh, well, last month in ulhasnagar okay. uh with uh, a very renowned doctor uh, dr hardik shah and it was inaugurated by uh, by uh, dr kriplani who is mm-hmm. from bombay hospital mm-hmm. uh very very well renowned uh, faces these uh, these are uh, in nephrology and we were blessed that we could open one uh, center in ulhasnagar that is serving uh, not just normal dialysis patients but also hhh positive so if a patient has hiv or hepatitis b or hepatitis c mm-hmm. we have a separate isolation room for them and that dialysis center in middle of ulhasnagar is now ser- serving uh, such people also there are not many facilities who serve hhh positive patients 